thoughts on this album. It's terrible. <laughs> it's awful. All right, starting off today, we have rapper and producer JPEG Mafia coming at us with I Lay Down My Life For You. So what did you think about JPEG Mafia's uh, latest project? My feelings are complicated. Or should we talk about our background? Yeah, and the background of it makes it even more complicated now that you say that. So there was the big controversy with him collaborating with Kanye and honestly I feel like it's something that we should move on from at this point just because everyone has but it makes it look like his older work is so performative that it was hard for me to approach this album objectively do you know what I mean with that yeah yeah and the same in a way it's an awkward drop for us but it kind of seems like the general public doesn't care they're just kind of like, fuck it, JPEG Mafia drop. Time to go drop 100 on it. Yeah, and I guess that's fair at this point. Yeah, Veteran's good. All My Heroes are Cornballs are good. LP is good. Scaring the Hose is good. I mean, yeah, like, all of his music is great. Yeah, Black Lim Carson's all right. True. I mean, sure. I just think that he's one of the better producers, if not the best producer, doing it at all out there right now. And that doesn't change here. No. No. This album sounds fucking fantastic at most points. Yes, sir. But uh, let's talk about some of those points where it doesn't sound so great. Honestly, at this point, almost all of it has grown on me to where I like it now. Uh, I wrote down Jihad Joe as like a least favorite for me. Really? Yeah. That one's one of the more raw ones uh, that kind of brings in some of those metal elements. I think the beat switch on that song is pretty insane. Even the lyrics on that one I liked a lot. I'm having a hard time with that assessment. What do you not like about it? Didn't scratch my JPEG Mafia brain raw itch. Fair enough. It didn't get a negative score. It just wasn't my favorite. I have a nine on that one. Oh. Yeah, no, I like it a lot. That's one of my favorites. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, even if we're not on the same page, I guess, whatever. My other one is It's Dark and Hell is Hot. My least favorites. Really? Wait. Is this an interlude? Eh, no. That's no, a track. No, that's a full track. It's a full track. I don't know. That one is not one of my favorites favorites but it still sounds pretty sick to me i like that it's getting in that jittery raw vocal sample kind of doing that whole thing um i think it fits in with the album well not a favorite but i still have it as an eight. Oh, yeah it just wasn't hitting right just the whole thing i i have a hard time about shipping mafia right now because it's just like the fuck is happening with your drums but this is the one that didn't scratch my autism uh the ones that did are sin mito and jpeg ultra yeah i think that sin mito i i think we're pronouncing that right i don't know is super hard i have listened to it a lot now one of the hardest tracks of the year yeah no it's really really solid i think that that's one of the better tracks to show off him bringing in some of that raw instrumentation the guitars on that sound really sick the drums mixed into everything uh, sometimes when i hear rap with like drums in it the drums just are mixed in weird and they just sound not right that makes sense sure they, they conflict with the beat sure yeah or whatever else is going on but this one fits really nicely yeah no definitely um that direction from him is something entirely new i don't think we got a lot of rock peggy in the past it's not really something that he's explored a lot but he's doing quite a bit of it here and i think most of it goes over quite well yeah for me if i'm going to pick a least favorite it is still ex-military we talked about this one a little bit more uh during the week which we don't normally do and i was saying ex-military then i'm saying ex military now and i know people like that one a lot how do you feel about it at this point i didn't like it at first but it grew on me i don't know maybe i still need to hear it more it's just hitting man and it's just, yeah i feel bad because it's just me putting jpeg into words right now it's just craziness <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard it's a little crazy yeah i think that it's just this main beat with x military that i don't really dig it, if you know what i mean by that like kind of that main sample that driving rhythm yeah it feels like one of the more simplistic beats on the album, but 
I don't think it's going over all that much. When it breaks into that more ethereal space, I do dig it quite a bit. It's just the song feels long, and I don't really like the main bit of it and how it sounds, I guess. Understandable. You have a length, and there's the same. It just like doesn't hit as right, but makes it not my favorite, but not my least favorite. Yeah. Very notable feature on New Black History, Vince Staples on here. Yeah, we have Vince Staples. Yeah. Vince Staples and Denzel curry on this album yeah 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 and i mean with denzel curry they're just kind of making a banger they did that back in the day with uh vengeance i believe that's the right track right yeah that's crazy that's back in the day huh? yeah <laughs> right yeah i mean probably a good five or six years now at least oh my god dude yeah if not more i was living in <laughs> when you showed me veteran <laughs> yeah yeah it's been a while it's been a while but i don't know if they've really collabed nothing's coming to mind since that point um so I, i'm trying to remember if they've really linked up at all before so yeah i mean that denzel curry track is just a banger i do feel like the vince staples one is a little bit more interesting yes yeah yeah i really liked him on this song a lot he he starts it out well excluding the future sampled chorus i guess he starts it out Really adds to the chaos of it, really thrives in this environment more than you would expect from him, I guess. True. Yeah, that was a really good track. Uh, I ended up liking the banger just a little more. Fair. Totally fair. But that is a really good track, and it was pretty close to being mentioned in my top scores. I just decided to cut it down to two tracks each. Yeah. This is a weird little Vultures comparison moment that I'm having with this. That future sampled chorus on this track is kind of funny to me because it's mixed in there so weird you could say that it's mixed in bad personally to me it sounds texturally interesting but it's mixed in there in such a way that it kind of reminds me of some of the like fuck up moments on the two vultures albums as far as the mixing goes and future is also all over both albums i think if not then he's all over vultures too it almost seems like some sort of parody between vultures and this album again like the connections are here I'm, I'm trying to make what i can of them do you know what i mean with that yeah do you see the parallel yeah either way though that future sample goes hard i love that they use that as the chorus on there facts it's crazy the chaotic beats on that like the instrumental is insane <laughs> yeah it was just really good yeah totally totally but um what else say did you notice some lyrics that you like i mean like i have a few moments i'd like to point out but like is there lines that stand out to you oh yeah i feel like there's stuff worth discussion yeah i was gonna talk about vulgar display of power okay i wrote down pantera reference and then i forgot to google anything <laughs> there's all these songs in a row here seem to be a reference to a different album i don't know if there's an album called new black history but uh dmx has it's dark and hell is hot then we have vulgar display of power that's a pantera album and then we have x military obviously being a death grips album so there's like uh, references to other album titles i don't really know why the pantera one reminds me of when he was shitting on a lot of metal artists for being uh racist and whatnot pantera certainly has their fair share of allegations that way but then again there's not really anything lyrically yeah which i thought was weird yeah i think he just like had the songs titled in a row that then he made the track maybe maybe like he, he named it and ordered it and then made the track one thing that i could pull from it is that that's one of the more metal sounding tracks i guess it's one of the most aggressive so maybe the pantera parallel comes in there yeah but then what about X military I mean, it's like industrial hip-hop stuff. You could kind of draw parallels between Death Grips and most of JPEG Mafia's work, so... Yeah, but where's the Charles Manson reference? Oh, that would have actually been sick. <laughs> Started <laughs> off with the same sample. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. The titles of songs confuse me here, no doubt. Mm -hmm. If we're going to talk about lyrics on Vulgar Display of Power, I think one of the catchier ones that he lays down across the whole album is uh, the only time I fuck with amateurs is if it's porno. Yeah, that was so. Yeah. <laughs> That goes so hard. He's got quotables across this. But what were some tracks that you want to talk about the lyrics of? Um, so I think that there are more serious moments that 
that give a little bit of introspection and show where he's at. I'm trying to remember which song. I guess the end of Jihad Joe like shows that he's aware that he's too chronically online and then is trying to move away from that, you know? Mm -hmm. Very straightforward. But it's something that I think you kind of need to recognize at some point. Yeah, JPEG Mafia. Stop being so online. Yeah. And I'm saying that from my music review podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> Internet music review podcast. I do feel like but, most of JPEG Mafia's fans, us included, are quite online, unfortunately. So it only makes sense. I don't know if I'm quite online. This is the most online I've ever been. Yeah, I'm pretty online right now. Fuck. Fair. I don't know. It just is a good look for him to say that he's got to check himself because he's too online. Yeah. Yeah. I think I Recovered From This might be one of the most emotional JPEG Mafia songs. Just full stop. In a really great way to end it. It was a good track. It's more subtle, so it didn't stand out to me at first, but on a closer listen, I like it a lot. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sorry, hold on. I got fucking floored for a second that you just sent you this, and then I'll respond appropriately to you what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me the, the Biden looks like a corpse and Trump looks like Tupac tweet that JPEG Mafia put out. This is what I mean. Looks like he tweeted a bunch about the fucking just like political stuff. Yeah, very political. It is kind of the whole point with the music, too, to be very provocative outwardly, so it, it's kind of like, it just makes sense. But it's good to see him kind of getting a little bit more in touch and trying to be less terminally online. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. This whole album just feels like a good step in the right direction after somewhat of a public moment that wasn't a great look. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, I made a fucky wucky. <laughs> I'm cutting that so <laughs> fast. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, is that, is that all we have to say, or do you do you wanna move on? The track title is "Scream in the Mirror" before I interact with anybody or scream this in the mirror. Good opener. Just wanna say, hell yeah, hell yeah. Good track title. A good title, good opener, goes hard. I feel like you can kind of say that about a lot of songs here. Uh, Simi though, good good track, goes hard. Indeed. Uh, what was your score? I ended up with an 83 on this. I ended up with an even 80. Even 80. Yeah. I do feel like it's kind of weird just how incredibly well received this is, even compared to some of his other work, some of his best work, really. I think we're right on the money. 87 is the current user score. Is it down to an 87 now? Yeah. Down to an 87. Uh, we're more in line with the critics. The critics have it at a 78. Really? Yep. There must have been, like, one really low score in there. Is that what happened? Three 80s and a 70 by the line of the best fit. Oh. Huh. Okay. Weird moment for music, and I think that only continues for the rest of the albums we have this episode. Yeah. I'm so out of it. Like, I woke up so wrong. Uh, another album that woke up super wrong is, uh, <laughs> Kanye West and fucking What's High Dollar Sign Drop Vultures, too. The only thing you really need is a husband. Yeah, so second Vultures album. Unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, we avoided the first one entirely. We just kind of decided that it was bait and not to take it. Yeah, and then we fell for the second one. It's just such a weird moment especially right alongside JPEG Mafia like this, it just seems yeah. like it has to be addressed. I don't know. You know You know what I mean? Like, it's not a standalone thing right now. There's so much happening. It's so odd. Yeah. What were your thoughts on this album? It's terrible. <laughs> It's awful. Yeah. How many times did you listen to it? Two, two or three, I think. Yeah, I gave it like three or four as well. Yeah, it's a little bit painful. I feel like it's cruel and unusual punishment in some places. It really is. This is like a super bad listen depending on where you are in it. And it's super inconsistent that way. Yeah, I I ended up not liking anything about this album. I, at first, I was like, Slide's not the worst way to open an album, I guess. But the more I listened to it, the, the more like my score just kept getting lower. 
I think Slide's totally fine. This fucking Count Dracula ass beat is like, <laughs> it's it's a way, to, it's a choice, but like it's kind of cool. It does feel like you're kind of invested in the album at that point. I listened to this absolutely baking my fucking brain out in the sun uh, because it was so hot and I was outside and I just kind of like closed my eyes and sat down and I was like, whoa, this might be an interesting experience. And then the next track plays. Yep. I was really baked and it did the same thing. We were baked in two different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Kiana starts on a vibe. I think Slide is the best song. Yeah, easily. Yeah, right? Like, but, um... And it's not even really that significant. It doesn't feel like that big of a song. It's kind of just an intro. Yeah. But it really sets the album up in a way that feels like clickbait almost yeah it's like the attic getting on album of the year uh or the one that's showing right now putin kills sick kids click here what <laughs> the ad that that's what it <laughs> it's it's not that literal of clickbait i don't suppose man you get the strangest <laughs> ads on here i'm a i'm done with the tier so i don't ever see this but a year is 12 bucks i fucking wait yeah as we go on time moving slow i feel like is just a a bad omen of what gets even worse eventually the mixing sounds like shit it really needs to be fixed you ever hear an old animal try to make like a woof or like a grumble of some sort and it just sounds really sad yeah yeah that's the sound for me yeah that's kind of how the mix sounds on that track and other tracks throughout subsequent tricks yeah what'd you think of field trip it's kind of the comparison uh, fucking sucked okay yeah the comparisons being drawn that this is kind of like carnival from the last album which is one of the songs that i've heard cardi's on here where you, you missed cardi you missed villager cardi oh i hear him oh my god yeah yeah I just forgot that was Cardi. Right, it's kind of hard to remember that that's him. Every time I see a Playboy Cardi feature now, I'm expecting something so different. <laughs> he doesn't sound like the same person. Yeah, the features aren't listed anywhere as far as I can see. No, no, they're not. They're all hidden features, which is weird. Good. But I would hide from this album too. I, I wouldn't want my name on it. Nobody's name is, is on it as the producers either. Yeah, nothing's, nothing's here. Nothing is here. There's no substance and then what little substance there is on slide for me gets killed by the fact that Connie's just trying his best to ruin everything about the track that's good yeah no ty dollar signs performances across it sometimes are fine he's trying so hard it seems like and then it's kind of it's just like no <laughs> be bad yeah no he does really come on and ruin several tracks on here yeah is husband a solo cut entirely yeah yeah right 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 so that one's really awful. Yeah. He sounds terrible, and the lyrics just have this, like, I don't even want to sit here and try to call it problematic or whatever, but it's this super unlikable tone about it. It feels misogynistic. I don't, it's odd. It's a really odd phrasing of everything, and I hate it. And then that song is just tacked on to the next song. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't even know, man. What happened here? I don't understand. Let's talk about Bomb. Bomb? Too. What like... the fuck? <laughs> it's this right, song. Just what the <laughs> My... it's, it's horrific. That song is terrible. <laughs> Dude, Bomb is, uh, is a perfect descriptor for what this album is doing. Bombing. Dead is uh, the exact descriptor I want to be uh, when, uh, when this album plays. What about it, though? Like, that is one that I wanted to mention. Do you have any particular thought? Isn't this one with Kodak Black? No. Which is the track with Kodak Black? He's on here somewhere. I thought that was it. He's on Field Trip. Field Trip. That's We already talked about that one. But like, yeah. man, stop fucking doing shit with Kodak Black. Who's on Dead? He's just always fucking here. Future and Lil Durk are on Dead. And both of them are really fucking trying their best. Yeah. Lil Durk, cut it out. Get out of here. <laughs> Oh, he's, looking. he's doing his best. He went way too hard. He showed up for this, and I don't know why. Yeah, oh, the fucking beat is just, like, wrong. Yeah, it is wrong. The energy from the rap is cool. If it was on, like, anyone else's beat, fucking some random 16-year-old in, like, North Carolina, sure, it's fucking anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
pretty much. Also, that is such a weird thing. This is such a terribly produced album. A thing that Kanye was known for for so long is how great his production was. I don't think anything on here is self-produced anymore, but it's like, whoa, man, you must have either totally fallen off or just didn't have any input, I guess. No, no, here's, here's what happened. When did his first album come out? His first album came out in 2004. Let's say he, he made a deal with the devil that he could have talent for, like, 14 years, and then after that, uh, it just fucking runs out or something. I have no idea. It ran out. <laughs> he didn't self-produce anything on this album, though, I don't think, and I think the album would have sounded maybe better if he did. I don't know anymore. Oh, my, well, why, why is he... Why is he Yen, and why is... I guess it's one that's a Y, and he turned himself into Yay. Yeah. I don't know. Yay, just, yay, dollar sign. I'm getting lost in a fucking train of just stupid fucking hatred for this. Apparently, Forever Rolling uses AI oh. uh, for Kanye. Oh, wait, actually, I believe it was Sky City. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Either way, take your pick. He sounds robotic, stiff, and uh, overall has no charisma on most of the songs, so I can't say I noticed. The fact that there's AI on this fucking album just, like, reinforces my score. Yeah, yeah, no, there's so little effort, and at this point, he did this with The Life of Pablo originally. He updated the album later on to kind of fix some of the mixes with it and stuff, and he's done that with everything recently as well. I want to say that Donda got updated and then Donda 2 was just kind of this, like, rolling set of updates. I don't know if Vultures 1 just came out in its completed state, but this one, I believe it was announced publicly that he's just going to fix the mixes on it. But it's like, dude, you didn't even drop it on a Friday. Why did you just, out of nowhere, Saturday drop? Like, you don't have a deadline, because I'm pretty sure Motherfucker doesn't even have a label anymore. Like, what? What, what happened? Why is it so rushed? I don't know. Wasn't he the STEM user guy? The what? Uh, the STEM user. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The STEM device thingy. I forget what it was called. Ste STEM player, STEM player. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how Donda 2 came out, through the STEM player thing. And then he was, like, updating it or whatever. The Donda 2 album in general is very confusing. This whole era, like, this decade for him has been such a mess, man. I remember when Pete Davidson said, keep Kanye 2006 again. No, I agree. <laughs> keep Kanye 2006. Or make Kanye 2006 again. He's been acknowledging the fact openly that people want the old Kanye back since the life of Pablo. Like, there's that old Kanye song on there. Yeah. And yet, he refuses to do anything anywhere near the quality level or the type of music that he used to do. And uh, it's just going further and further off the deep end. Yeah, I don't know. One thing that I'll give some props to and i honestly more just feel like it's out of coincidence due to there being no curation of this album and it just being like random bullshit but hey maybe it was intentional there wasn't like so much bait on this album you know i mean last time he had multiple lines about jewish people he had multiple lines about his controversies and stuff ended the album with two songs called problematic and king i mean the whole thing was really revolving around controversy so much. This one seems entirely disconnected for the most part. Yeah. So, like, that's nice, I guess. He mentions uh, Jews in uh, in Sky City. Really? What's the line? I think that went over my head. The the two bars were, Always want to know, did Biggie get a big house? Do Pac got a thug mansion? Is it pimped out? Uh, is it a place for Jews and the Gentiles? Well, I mean, the Jews and the Gentiles thing, that's like a biblical reference in a way, so it could kind of go both ways. I... I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. Either way, it's a lot more tasteful. The whole vibe of Vultures 1 was just yuck. despicable. <laughs> um, this one is just a, a shit show, a complete disaster, and it sounds terrible. It has entirely different problems. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have anything else to say? Uh, what did you end up scoring it? I gave this an 18, just because certain pockets sound fine. I was at a 10, but I dropped down to a 0. Okay. I think that this is a really 
fair one to just kind of give a zero to and move right along. Uh, why'd you come to that conclusion, I guess? Every time Kanye ruined a track, it's being more angry, and then it just took all the points out for me. True, yeah. There's not really many, if any at all, songs that I want to play front to back. If all your songs are mid, you have bad album. If all your songs are bad, you have a zero. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. Yeah. There's something about it that just doesn't feel zero-y to me, I guess. I felt that. I felt that. I could go back to a 10, but final answer right now, I'll stick I'll stick with the zero. I think it's my first zero of the podcast. Is it really? Yep. My lowest score on the podcast was a seven. Oh, wow. No, five. I gave the Joe to see EP a five. I thought you gave a zero to MGK. No, I gave him a seven. Oh, no, that's right. I did and you didn't. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations on the zero. Thank you. That's exciting. (laughs) Maybe all of the wrong exciting, however exciting nonetheless. All right. Let's transition to some good music. After all of the discussion we've had, I feel like I need to go shower first. But nonetheless, uh, let's move on to Paranool Sky 100. Sky 100. Sky 100. Number one album of the year on album of the year. That was a redundant sentence, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Number one ranked for the year. True. It lost its 90 and went down to an 89. Yeah, a 9 just being the first number at any point in its existence is super impressive, though. True. I didn't see it but i'm also listening to it on youtube this is real good though but i don't think it's nine good you really don't no it's not clicking it's not doing anything for you it's not doing a ton i'm gonna wait till it goes back out in the streaming because i couldn't really go back through individual tracks a lot of the time because i was mostly just playing it on youtube why weren't you playing it on Bandcamp? because my band camp my desktop is broken ah fair uh this does a whole lot for me i like this a whole lot i'm right there with everybody and i don't really have a great argument for it i want to say like everybody's just kind of on the same page that this is just awesome and i'm right there yeah this is awesome but you're seeming very Uh, back and forth to me right now explain your thoughts no 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 no. i am trying to describe the score that i have in english words because uh the difference between like an 80 and a 90 isn't huge it's not huge but it's significant because one of those is like really close to perfect (sighs) yeah I'm like in the middle, middle-ish. Like I'm not at 80. It's just good. It's real good. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's breathtaking. It's fascinating. It sounds. My breath was still, still in there. My breath was stolen. My socks were removed. My brain was outside of my skull. And yet my cock remains attached. Your cock was not blown off. And I find that to be heavily unfortunate. I mean, I don't know. It's just really good. It's not not really, really good. It's not. It's just good music. <laughs> yeah. G- guitar sounds in my brain are good. Thank you very much. No complaints. Moving on. <laughs> but but I'm not getting the, oh my fucking god, my entire taste of music has been warped. I really do like it that much. This might be my favorite Paranual album I've heard thus far. It is mine. Yeah, have you heard many of the other ones or any of the other solo ones? I've only heard to see the next part of the dream and the facts gang one okay okay it's always really complicated for me when the lyrics are not something i can understand because lyrics are kind of a big thing for me which is part of the reason i hated vulture so much but usually i want to like connect with the lyrics get into the storytelling and stuff a little bit Uh, If that's all existent, get into kind of the imagery of it. I have no idea what he's saying, but he's spitting facts. How about that? Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah. I was getting this really strong sense of nostalgia across the whole thing. There's this really bittersweet feel to all of it. Do you know what I'm saying with that? Yeah, it's uh, it's shoegaze. I mean, sure, but I don't know. If I look at, like, okay, what's the biggest shoegaze album? Like, 
My Bloody Valentine. My Bloody Valentine. Yeah. Okay. Well, that doesn't give me a nostalgic and definitely doesn't give me a happy feeling. You know what I mean? But Sweet Velocity Design Comfort does. Isn't that something entirely different? Uh, it has the shoegaze tag. It is something entirely different. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't click in my head as something even close to the same as this. But it feels like a flavor of shoegaze that's a lot happier. But like, it's got a lot of emotion, and it makes me wish that I could be there with the language. I just wish that I spoke the language these lyrics were in the whole way through. Because I know even if I translate it, I'm just gonna get like the vague idea idea because the phrasing's not going to be the same in english you know yeah. it's just not gonna it's it's not gonna hit the same it's the same way as like if you watch dubbed anime you know yeah yeah it just doesn't work quite as well i watched dubbed anime sure the last one i watched anime though was one piece like three years ago right i was forced to watch one. no for sure but like do you know what i mean with that where you can kind of just see where things should be phrased differently because either we don't have a word for that or we don't have the same sayings. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. This album does do feeling like a cool wind going through your hair when you're driving your convertible at like 80 miles per hour. Yeah. Driving through the countryside with this one on is, it's a a beautiful experience. That one's a 10 in the countryside. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, listening to it in the car to start with and I wasn't sure if I was going to end up on a perfect score or not because i had to rate them all out individually and do my close listen to decide that fully but it does basically feel perfect in that setting pop this on windows down stereo loud middle of nowhere boom it's so nice i will be like doing an update review when it does come out on the streaming which is supposed to in like three days oh is that the case yeah this was a weird saturday drop three of the albums did not come out on friday that are we're covering this week it's so strange that that's the case yeah yeah uh i just love this i love this i love the way it sounds it's beautiful it's magical well you love it so much why don't you marry it <laughs> what <laughs> um the 15 minute song on here 14 minute rather oh, shit. uh Amazing. I didn't know there was a 15 minute song on here. YouTube has annotations now, but it didn't when I was looking at it. Or maybe I was just dumb. Oh, it just didn't have timestamps at the time? Yeah. Okay. It's basically an album in and of itself. It's got segmented portions. It's so adventurous. It goes so many places. Oh my god. I, I'm sitting here thinking it's just like actual fucking 10 tracks. I thought there was like 15 tracks. Mmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. But no, that's all one song. And uh, it might as well be its own little EP. Patrick. It's a fucking experience. Hell yeah. New um, Beach Life and Death drops. <laughs> no, for real. It does kind of feel that way. There's different sections and it all feels very emotional. It's not my favorite on the album, though. That has to either go to Gold River or lights off repentance and i don't know do you really have like any track ratings or no. any specific okay uh i, ha- I fucking have them now i got damn it <laughs> no no i got you yeah that makes sense that if you were just kind of hearing the whole thing honestly that might make your score go down that you didn't have the segments right in front of your face too to actually like piece out where songs are that is also why uh, I, I wrote in my album of the year page that this is pretty good so far. We'll re-review when it comes out in streaming. There's too much going on so we can give it the time it deserves. This also came out later than I would have liked it to, to give it the time that it deserved. Personally, I even want more time to sit with it, and I do feel like I do have strong thoughts on it, obviously, but... We haven't given this any time to cook. Yeah, yeah. Like, definitely uh, keep an eye on our album of the year pages if you want to see our update on it. We could pull it, put it up on YouTube short in like a week if. Uh, potentially. It uh, is busting respectfully, potentially. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, I feel like we're going to have different thoughts on our year end kind of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's for me, this too. is going to be up there at the very least. Um, You know. It's getting to be about time to start getting that list together. Yeah. I mean, soon. Like, I, I have some things compiled for it, and there's going to be songs, and there's going to be the album itself featured on some of my lists, no doubt about it. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. I feel like I should have a little bit more because the experience of this album is crazy but uh do you because i'm not sure that i do 
No. No? Okay. This album was just really good. I gave it an 83. You gave it an 83? Yeah. Okay. I gave it a 92. Oh. I mean, it does just make sense that you're not exactly on the same page just yet, though. True. Yeah. I think that this one, like, maybe just don't trust us right now. Because it could grow. It could grow. No doubt. Always take... Our ratings with a grain of salt, they might all change a little bit. Next on the list, we have Aryak Echo's Division for Human Ascension. Is this one that you told us told me about, right? Yeah, so this one got sent to us. I noticed that it wasn't on a uh, album of the year, so I ended up throwing it up there, but I don't think I had the image for it. I think you put the image up on it. I think someone else did. Some motherfucker named Rice. Yeah, so it's up there now. Wow, this is underappreciated. Uh, this is amazing. I am the one review on it. Yeah, this is amazing. This is incredible. We are at a point where every time we get sent something, I honestly just feel honored. And this is one of those examples. It's always really cool when we have artists who have like super good music that apparently it's criminally underrated, criminally underrated, uh, get sent to us. Yeah, this is so good. This is incredible. This makes it worth doing the podcast. It really does. Just that. Yeah. And having a reason to discover this music in the first place. This should not be going under the radar. This is incredible. Yeah. I think it's just a lack of online presence is the reason it's not being like discovered more. I mean, they're pushing it a little bit and stuff. So I'm hoping that that ends up working. Yeah, push it to everybody. To- to just get straight into it so strong of a recommendation from me this is insanely good yeah it's uh it's up there it's it's one of the better things i think i've heard this year you think so yeah yeah that's good that's good i think so too i'm absolutely blown away i was getting chills all the way through this thing the instrumentation is fantastic the lyrics are crazy the flow of the album is just fucking awesome i'm like speechless while i'm listening to it and for that reason i'm kind of speechless trying to review it yeah ballad of malcolm is one of my favorite tracks on this album my favorite as well my second favorite got fucking lost like my review deleted itself because i didn't save it Uh, i think i lost it but an eight minute song and i I wrote down is this what tool sounds like to people who like tool (laughs) that's that's so fair (laughs) no that song is so crazy though if you have a saxophone member in your band and you have them going crazy on a song just send it to us honestly at this point yeah <laughs> immediately you're you're gonna get an 80 just for that the jazz fusion into this is crazy it's one of the best albums i think i've heard this year like, let me see where my score is stacking up against everything it's uh it's up there it's pretty high up there for me like yeah this is just wh- like what the fuck i this feels like when i listened to swans for the first time yeah oh my god yes and you can definitely draw parallels here and there the lyrics especially feel a little bit inspired to me do you see what i mean with that yeah and the vocal tone definitely is giving more black country new road if we need to draw a comparison yeah so here let's let's just let's just make it simple let's take all the good things from black country new road all the good things from swans and all of the good things from tool i guess (laughs) you get this i also felt like there were some black midi influences totally just kind of that scene that they fall into with bands like squid lyrically the ballad of malcolm is kind of where things start to get crazy i feel like yeah who the fuck is malcolm and why is he so scary there are characters throughout the album most certainly did you pick up on that there's a story i unfortunately didn't have time to go through the lyrics of this one so i did not okay but i can only imagine that would have raised my score from what i was picking up on uh with close listens i think that it would too i think that it's kind of an integral piece even though it's not fully clicking in my brain and there's so much cryptic esoteric imagery that is 
in between me understanding it and where the album wants me to get. I do feel like I'm just not smart enough for this album sometimes. That's where the tool comparison came from. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's so wild. Dude, look at some of the single covers. For this band? Yeah. The single covers for this album is fucking sick. And I think I can see all, yeah, you can see all the little symbols from the single covers like in the album cover. Oh, really? Is that what's going on there? It's like a ASAP Rock did that i believe as well i thought that was super sick what this cover reminded me of is like a flash tattoo sheet yeah yeah which i mean these would all be super sick tattoos so i i guess it works in that exact way true but like it's all these little illustrations they don't necessarily seem related but they all seem like they have some presence in relation to the album yeah i'm sure upon further listens you can under like your mul- multiplicity has the heart so let's see if there's like a parallel with that. Oh, what are you saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like the lyrics multiply talking about a heart. Okay. Somewhere in there, but Yeah. Yeah. Hand holding the heart. There's all of this speak of transcending into some interdimensional space outside of You ever you ever play Bloodborne? Uh no, I have not. The album feels like the plot to Bloodborne. That just makes me want to check out Bloodborne, honestly, because this is it's pretty sick. Wonderful. It's the second the second musical reference to Bloodborne this year. <laughs> I don't remember. What was the other one? Cemetery. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like we're following the Malcolm character up until the nosedive interlude, and then we're getting someone else. And then there's a specific reference of the two of them meeting on the final track when he found me at the hotel bar. Yeah. There's a story. Like I said, I feel like I'm not smart enough to decipher everything going on, but it's so cool. Yeah. All right. We need a YouTuber out there to do an hour-long essay on the intricacies of this album, please. (laughs) Yes, please. I know that I'm going to be diving into it a lot more times um because just listening to this is such a pleasurable wonderful incredible breathtaking listen genuinely i mean that so much yeah and big shout out to the person who sent this to us yeah uh thank thank yeah like i said like i'm just honored i'm i'm honored that this has been put in front of my face by someone who actually worked on it True. because uh the talent on display here the skill on display here is fucking fantastic what's some other moments like musically that spoke to you in some way uh, did i mention body song already i'm not sure i don't think so I did as the single because the body song has the heart oh true body song was, was my second favorite but crash is a really close third yeah so introducing that second character and just the way it like crescendos it's just mm. yes so true Yum yum delicious. I feel like the second character is very angry and frustrated at life in general. And um, if we're even to assume this second character theory that I'm bringing up is not just me rambling on nonsense. But I feel like that character is very frustrated, if so, and very just angry at the world. And those two do such a great job. Body Song has such a strong, like, huge grove to it. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah, dude. This is another one of those albums where I, I should have asked at the beginning, is this a 10? <laughs> Maybe. Like I said, you know, I, I've given it quite a few spins at this point, both, like, surface and deeper level, paying attention to all the lyrics and whatever. And every time it grows on me a little bit, so I'm not really done taking my journey with it. I guess Paranual is kind of the same way. I really wish that my weekend wasn't so packed this weekend so that I could have uh, done a little bit more diving into these two albums. Because this one deserves it. Paranual is just cool, so that one I want to have uh, sit with me a little while. This one has dense intricacies. Yeah, dude, this one fucking takes my brain and shoots it in the mush. (laughs) I don't know. Something like that. You know the the movie where the guy goes, Kalamar, Kalamar, and then like rips out the guy's heart and then like shows it to him? Um, maybe? Same vibe, but like in a good way. I think I can picture yeah. what you mean. And yeah, yeah, same vibe. 
it's just mind blowing. It's insanity. This is so crazy. Another moment specifically, I'm just kind of looking through right now. I really like the middle section of this album with a long golden tether and nose dive kind of being this slow down angelic transcendent whatever the fuck you want to call it it's, it's just like really beautiful true yeah the middle of the album is, is real good it's all real good and a long golden tether yeah a long golden tether is real good super good nose dive's just an interlude so i kind of wish it was tacked on to a long golden good tether, interlude. but it's it's a wonderful interlude nonetheless i appreciate when i'm able to skip the interlude if i don't like it or don't want it true fair but in this case it yeah in this case, I Doesn't don't matter. think that I'm going to put these songs on a playlist, you know what I mean? The whole album goes on. If I hear one song, I want to hear all the songs. Yeah, if this album goes on, just so you play Swans, even if it scares the hoes. <laughs> it is like Swans in that way, and it's kind of like Black Midi, some Black Midi I, I play by itself, for yeah. sure. But that noise rock uh, sort of corner of things i want to sit down and listen to the whole experience this is most certainly one of those i think body song i'll play by itself yeah if you were going to play one no doubt that's the one yeah body song's the one body song is the one yes um what was your score on this album i have a 93 on this currently and again it grows on me a little bit each time so there was part of me it was like, do we just full send the 10? I don't even know. I landed on an 89 with this one. Do you have an 88 on album of the year currently? Uh, No, I changed it to an 89 just in case. Just in case. Okay. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Again, we're just getting spoiled with what's getting sent our way. Yeah. I mean, just this... recently, hoping I'm not forgetting something, but we had Malnesi and then we had Aller himself. And now we have this. Yeah. Like, dude, these are some of the best albums I've heard in a while. True. True. Yeah. Moving on to an album that's not the, one of the best albums I've heard in a while. Uh, Killer Mike has dropped a album under the name Michael and the Mighty Revival. Songs for Sinners and Saints. You are like, you are like. If you did, did you did, 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 with my 69 five bird from the curb niggas kept and rapping all they broke ass shit the mighty midnight revival in particular i do believe <laughs> uh he was right on the mid yeah it's pretty mid yeah i wrote decent rap project from killer mike not as good as rtj of course or even his other solo albums this seems like a regular rap, rap album number 47 but coming from killer mike that's a little disappointing since we know how good a rapper he can be if he just chooses to make better music yeah it really feels like he didn't apply himself on a lot of the tracks here and beyond that i think the biggest issue is just that the flow of this project and sometimes the flow of the songs themselves are a mess yeah it feels like how my car drives bad kind of goes and then clunks a little bit and keeps going <laughs> i i don't think it's even that it's just sharp left turn after sharp left turn that's what i was trying to say yeah i just i i don't know what to make of it uh offset was on here that was cool uh, yeah, that feature was really good, actually. Yeah. I think that what he brought was pretty emotional and kind of finished off that song quite nicely. Yeah, it was one of the better tracks of the album because of that. Mm -hmm. My favorite is probably Nobody Knows. Yeah, it's a good one. I think that that's one of the better ones, especially if you isolate it. Yeah, I don't know who Anthony Hamilton is, but... Yeah, I'm not aware of the name either, personally, but... Uh... I don't see myself coming back to anything on this album, but I want to hear... Killer Mike, I'm just going to go listen to Run the Jewels. Or I should eventually listen to the self-titled, te technically self-titled, Michael. Yeah, the sort of self-titled. So we both skipped over that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I heard it once before, and I forgot it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's sitting with a 73. That's not that much higher. Whatever. I, I know a lot of people like that one. R.A.P. or rap music, whichever way you want to say it, uh, is a fantastic album. It's really, really good. So we know that Killer Mike can exist in a solo context quite well, just not here. Yeah. But then again, that was basically like Run the Jewels Zero, if we want to call it that, because LP yeah. <laughs> did almost all of the production, I think. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, then it does seem like RTJ Zero. Yeah. I feel like there's a gaping LP-shaped hole 
in this album. <laughs> like, we need RTJ5 at this point because they have a great chemistry together that really brings the best out of both of them as rappers. But the production on this is so weak compared to anything that LP puts together for the most part. Yeah. When LP really produces on the Jules albums, he just fucking he knocks it out of the park every single time. Exactly, yeah. Consistent over hopefully 10 years. Once they drop RTJ5, it will be a little over 10 years from RTJ1, which they should have dropped last year. That way it could be the 10th anniversary for RTJ1. But Yeah, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know the lore. I'm not sure why... Killer Mike has just branched off and done two individual albums now. I don't know. I mean, man's man's won a Grammy. Yeah. On yeah, no. I, it was a moment. It was a moment. They were posting that, like, on the RTJ account. Yeah. You know, they're together. We know that much. We know that there's, like, not a split up occurring. Uh, at least it doesn't seem that way. Yeah, if RTJ split up, probably. <laughs> you might have to at that point um <laughs> y- yeah yeah I don't, I don't know why he renamed himself michael and the mighty revival but you're forgetting the midnight every time man you gotta i don't fucking care i just hope this happens don't, <laughs> don't do it slummer for junkies definitely seems like the main centerpiece of the album being a 10 minute song like it is and having some of the more significant themes did you mess with that one not really it was passable like all of it's passable it just wasn't feeling good Mm -hmm. nobody knows and exit nine were like my two Mm. favorites but other than that it was just kind of like exit nine is one that feels to me while it's like got us really good pockets it's one that feels to me like it's really working with an outdated formula song sounds dated oh I didn't feel that way on my listen, but I get what you're getting at, but I like it. <laughs> okay, fair, fair, fair enough. I think a lot of this album can be said that way. Like, it, it just doesn't seem like it's doing anything new and interesting. Kind of feels like an old sitcom. Something like that, sure. Like, you know when you watch an old sitcom and it's like, this can't come out today. <laughs> It's something that shouldn't come out today coming out today, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of the writing or anything like that. It's just... No, no. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I guess, yeah. This is just really underwhelming overall. There's some good writing. Yeah. Let's go track. Introspective and emotional stuff that he gets into when he's really talking some, like, real stuff that feels important but i don't know it doesn't make me want to come back to it no i definitely won't be Is there any other any other thoughts theories questions on this album uh yeah like also wanted to mention the end of this falls off a, a fucking cliff in a way oh <laughs> well, I'm gonna go play it. trying to do like the memphis stuff but it's so weak feeling it's like you wanted to make bangers at the end but none of them feel punchy enough they just don't get where they're supposed to be i don't know yeah i don't know man yeah this just feels underwhelming god it really does just fall from a fucking cliff <laughs> <laughs> yeah those last three tracks are rough i feel like you get to the centerpiece and then i played the exact end and it's just like it just fucking ends <laughs> just, just done yeah there's no pacing there's no rhythm it sounds like it's like bleeding into the next track because then Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe started playing. I'm like, uh, wrong album. <laughs> Transition. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I don't really know what else to do with this one. It's fine. I gave it a 60. I gave it a 59. <laughs> nice. We're so close. Pretty much the same. Yeah, we're both a little below the consensus, so I guess I'm glad we're respectively oh. the same that way. Yeah. There's some really great pockets of this album, but the way it comes together is just kind of ugly. Me too. All right, sweet. One last thing we wanted to mention before we go, there has been a very significant remix of a song on Brat by Charlie XCX. Guess is the song in particular. Uh, I'm going to guess it was Mean Girls. I'm, you said guess what it was. Oh, <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, we got we got Billie Eilish in the mix here. Billford Eilish. Billford. <laughs> Not this again. Fuck. Not you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this track is perfect. Yeah, you think it's perfect? No, I, I know it's perfect. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you like what Billy is adding to the track in particular? Because I know you just like to guess as it was. Yeah, it is still good. It is still. good 
good. I'm conflicted. I feel like her tone kind of would be better suited for some of the other tracks on Barat, but it's cool what she does here. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's kind of like almost rapping. I, it's interesting. I do like how her how she was mixed alongside the lyrics. Yeah. I feel like the tone and everything just fit perfectly. Uh, Dylan Brady also produced some of this. Oh, really? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's so crazy. That is crazy, but it but it adds up. It adds up like addition. It does. It does. I think this is cool. Guess wasn't one of my favorite tracks to begin with, but it's still a great track. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It was, it was just a really good song. It's just really good, and what Billy adds is, at the very least, interesting. That That's what I'll say. Lyrically, it's kind of kind of wild. It's cool. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. expecting this energy from Billie Eilish. I guess maybe I should have been after lunch, but the rest of that album was really like slow and emotional. I'm still not used to Billie Eilish getting in this vibe, you know? Yeah, I just don't think about it. Yeah, she's doing the thing. She's, she's matching the energy of the song pretty decently, like pretty, more than I would expect. Really Too much. I forgot it was good for a second. Yeah? It's just real good. It's just real good. Okay. Uh, Good remix. Uh, We should have covered the one with Lord. That one was also perfect. Yeah, that one felt like an even more significant moment to me, and it was a very, like, emotional moment, whereas this one's just kind of a banger. Girl. So confusing sometimes. So confusing. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's a Brat remix album on the way. That would be super cool. That would be sick. That would be awesome. Please give us Brat, but there's a feature on every song. <laughs> that would be so funny. If- <laughs> Brat, but there's a feature on every song. Or- Wait, Brad, it should, but it's it the same. Be... So there's a, but there's a feature on every song, so it's not. I don't. <laughs> uh, it should be like Brad, but someone else made it. <laughs> Brad, but someone else made it. Yeah, a remix album would be awesome because both of these remixes that came out post the album coming out are really cool and the remixes that were out before the album came out were also super cool hell yeah yeah so hope that's on the way i hope we're just getting like singles for an album we don't know exists yet i would probably die I, everyone would but good i would i would simply transcend brat summer continues hell yeah. is is the vibe this is great it's great all right i i think that's it I think that's all. This is the weirdest week we've had on the podcast so far. Literally three of the five albums didn't even come out on the the Friday. They came out like this weekend. And a Thursday. Or, well, no, JPEG dropped on fucking Thursday and then two of them were on Saturday. And then um, Auric Echoes is technically from a couple weeks ago, but still. And then Michael and the Midnight. Oh God, it's contagious. You did it. <laughs> the Mighty Midnight. <laughs> you did it to me. I forgot the Mighty and you forgot the Midnight. Uh, He's like under a different name. This album's kind of confusing. What? What a week. What a week. I'll say that much. What a week. Um, all right. Rankings for the week. Top place. We have Auric Echoes. Auric Echoes. Divisions for Human Ascension at a 91%. And then in second place, we have Paranormal Sky 100 at an 87.5%. And in third place, we have JPEG Mafia. Crazy that JPEG's at third place on the list. Uh, I Lay Down My Life for You True. at an 81.5. And then... Uh, we have Michael and the Mighty Midnight Revival Songs for Sinners and Saints at a 59.5. And then uh, Yen Dollar Sign Ship Name dropped a little bit of a stinker with the Vultures at a 2.9%. No, that's a, that's just a 9%. It's Vultures 2. Vultures 2 at a 9%. Yes. I was like, how the fuck did we get a 2.9? Take a look at that fucking scoreboard and just tell me that life makes sense. Drops off. Just fucking tanks. Yeah, this is like the best worst year for music ever. And you could ignore all the bad stuff, so like it's technically just the best year for music. Yes, sir. The bad stuff is crazy bad, but the good stuff is crazy good. And we have like two, maybe three, depending on how you want to look at it, examples of that this week. Yeah. Seems like every time I turn around, there's just a new essential album that everyone in their life needs to fucking hear. Yeah, dude. So go listen to Arik Echoes. If you can take anything away from this episode, go listen to that. Also, they got a vinyl and a CD out. They look super sick. They got a shirt too, but uh, like just go go support this. It's awesome. It's super cool. Uh, one of the better projects we've heard all year. Okay. 
That's all. That's it. That's all. This is a long, long, long episode. I do believe. We hope you enjoyed. If you have enjoyed the video and the podcast and or the audio of the podcast, please drop a like. We would greatly appreciate it. And you can subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on for more music-related content coming your way. Micah, do you have anything to say to the people before we get on out of here? The Fury of the Aquabats by the Aquabats is a 100%, and uh, you can't convince me otherwise. It's just true. That's pretty wholesome, and we'll see you next time.